Hey, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Musicians Talk Show podcast. I believe it is episode number 98. You believed correctly. I am one of your two co-hosts, Alice Dwight. And I'm Matt Tolly. And we have some shit to say. We do have some shit to say. Got some sad news. You want to start right off the bat and sure. handle that? Uh, had a Neil Pert. Is what we decided to say. Yep, nobody, we couldn't decide nobody between knows, Peart but. <laughs> and Pert, but I've always heard Pert. So I'm going to go with Pert, too. Yeah. So, anyways, we lost him yesterday. Or, no, Friday. I keep saying yesterday. Well, it was Friday. announced Friday. He actually died Tuesday, I think. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Or at least that's what, I think that's, I looked it up and I think that's what it Okay, because, yeah, I was confused about the timing, too, because it seemed like just in the middle of the afternoon on Friday, but. Yeah, it, th- that was when, like, the official announcement was released. Mm-hmm. Seth actually told me before anyone else. Right, right. He posted it on Discord. And I, it was one way I found out. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I found yep. out other ways, but yeah, that's how I found. Out. And then you start seeing everyone. Yeah, what's going yep. on right here? Right here. Yeah. So good to see Seth using the Discord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has his own uh, his own server. Oh, excellent! With like excellent. A, like a hundred something members. So oh, good. There, it's good a gamer him. thing. So there's they're always right. in there chatting. Right, and so. that's what that's what that is. He hopped over, and he for. got a few of them to join ours. That kept posting like. Uh, some dude kept just playing like Pantera videos on bass. No way. Or whatever. And like, he was like, you should join this Discord. Oh shit, I wish I would have seen <laughs> so, that. I missed it. So that no, that, was, that wasn't in ours. Oh, I was going to say, like, how did I miss that? But the, the guy and some other guy joined ours oh, shortly cool. after that. Okay, cool, cool. So. Right on. Um, if you're a member of our Patreon, you're going to be seeing the video for this one. And you'll notice that we are working on the green screen. We're not sure if we're going to keep it, but we're testing it for today. Right, right. I like it. I like how it's a clean background. I can mm-hmm. see the floor a little bit right there. Yeah, sure. right here. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. get big. Yeah, anyways. But uh, yeah, it's a work in progress, all this is. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to keep the green screen. But we don't need it. We just make a nice background and sit, sit in a nice room. That's all. But we can't you know? move all this stuff. That's the problem. Right. Well, what about just books like we have already there? We just make that the background. We could, sure. It's just we have that door. Right, like right, right. Racks and cables and all sorts of not attractive yeah. studio stuff. Okay. Well, we blocked all that out We'll today. figure it out. We'll find a place to do it. That's what I think maybe is the issue. Maybe the other rooms. Back to that idea. I'm Anyways. about to sneeze so hard. Anyways, Neil Pert, uh, Pert lost this, uh, <laughs> this week. That's fucking super let down of Rush. Drummer of Rush, in case anybody doesn't know who we're talking about. Yes, uh, legendary. Legendary drummer. Jeez. Um, I wrote So It Begins because... I feel like he's the first of, the 20, yeah. of everyone in that's about to go. And it's, it seems like there's a lot of people that could be close. So, I mean, we'll all, well, all these guys are like the same age. And right, a lot of right. them are way older than him. He was only 67, right. which I don't, don't think is super, super old. No, no. Um, he, he's a drummer. I mean, lived a hard life, I'm sure. Rock and roll drummer. Rush is famous for not partying or drugs, drinking. Oh, okay. Well, stuff. not not for not for partying. They would I go mean, back after the their shows. They would all go back to the hotel room and read books. That's what they would always do. Okay. They're famous for it. Okay. Well, then fuck. I don't know. I don't know Rush that well. I, um, I don't know what they do on their off time. Yeah. I read uh, one of their books. I don't remember which one. Um, biographies or whatever. Right on. But, um, yeah. And what was it? Do you know, know what like it was of called? Um, I don't. I could find out, though. Right while, on. While you continue to talk. Yeah, David was, uh, when I texted David about it right away, our drummer, and he uh, was immediately like, uh, he's, man, that's a bummer. And let me see what he texted this. This song is what he said to listen to. It was, oh yeah, One Little Victory. That's what it was. And he said, man, that's, that's a one killer song. He said, that's the sweetest Rush song I ever heard. Really? That's what he said. So <clears throat> check out One Little Victory. Oh, and um, I know what it was. It wasn't the. It wasn't a book. It was a documentary. Oh, cool! And this was it? it right here. Beyond, Beyond the lighted, lighted stage. stage. Cool. It was on Netflix for a long time. Yeah. Might still be. Remember the movie "I Love You, Man"? The band you know, the story you don't. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was a great little uh, like a lot of Rush stuff going on in that. You know, it's funny things about Rush. Yeah, I mean, I mean, looking at this though, Neil Peart and Alec, Alex Lifeson are like the same guy. <laughs> They Hilarious. look very similar. Getty Lee definitely has his own look, though. <laughs> yeah, he looks very different. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so, you know, R.I.P. Neil Peart and, uh, you know, legends are going to continue to die. We know this. This is going to happen. Yeah. Get, brace yourself. Yeah, Point brace yourself. Yeah, don't. Why are you acting surprised when Keith <laughs> yeah. Richards, oh, man. who's 98, yeah, yeah, dies? Dude. Like, come on. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Uh, what about a weekend review? Not much over here. We practiced and we have a show coming up. February 21st at Amos's. Um, that's, that's the big thing we're doing. We, we actually have a, had a couple shows pop up before that, but we were planning on not booking anything until that was done so we could kind of focus on rehearsing for that. But we've had a couple things pop up that we're working on. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, we, I uh, Friday night uh, went out with some of my friends from Murder by Melons, and uh, we saw a band at Lucky Skate Shop. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty cool bands. Uh, I wish the sound was better there. I think it's just maybe they're they're kind of getting their feet wet with the mm-hmm. live music thing, and I'm sure they're you know figuring out their situation. But they have a sound booth in a room that's isolated from the uh, the band itself. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if I didn't go in myself. I wonder if they have monitors in it. Like where they can actually hear the feed that they're getting, you know, from the. So they're mixing a live sound, but not hearing the live sound. I'm, I'm assuming they must have monitors in that room, right? That's not the same though. No. No. I mean, you yeah. can mix some monitors and make it sound dope. Walk out the room, it sounds like ass. Right. Like you need, you have to be either. in the room. Right, like you right. have to hear what you're mixing. Yeah, and it, and that's the thing. So it, it wasn't, you know, the best sound I ever heard. The guitar players that that we saw were awesome. Uh, we saw some killer bands. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember the bands? Shit, or I did do you not say? remember the bands. Um, just phone a friend total fucking blank might have to phone a friend on that one but anyways the local bands that are kicking ass so that's that's good news but okay I, I just wish the sound was better there that's all i haven't heard the phrase skate shop yeah in skate a long shop. time yeah, well, they, you can buy skate skate parts there man that's crazy it trucks is. yeah it's out in uh, greensboro wheels all the things yeah all the things it's a cool place too they, they got it all decorated up you it's can nice. wear audio shoes you remember those oh uh, yeah yeah i do remember them element <laughs> I was in sixth grade when that um, kind of trend hit the United States really hard. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, middle when school. When everyone was wearing them. I was in middle school. I was listening to Eminem and trying to learn how to ollie. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. And then shortly after that, I got into Guns N' Roses and guitar and dropped all that other bullshit. Right, right. Yeah, I stopped skateboarding definitely when I was like, realized I wanted to play guitar and get really good at it. So I, I put a lot of work into it. And then I was like, I realized how close I was always to breaking an arm or a leg or mm-hmm. something. And just, you know. Yeah, I never thought about that side of uh, things. Which, that was which always fortunately, funny. I didn't. I enjoy didn't taking risks. That, so. I enjoy taking risks, but not like that. Not those kind of risks. So, um, but anyways, that uh, we did that, and then we're going to talk about what what else I did uh, in a little bit because we wanted to talk mm-hmm. about. Unless you wanted to roll right into it, because that's really all I got after that. Sure. Yeah. Um. So we did after that. Um. That was this morning. We did uh, yesterday and this morning. We did drum playthrough videos for Prep and Barium, um, which was David's idea. Our drummer. Uh, he used to do videos of uh, him covering songs uh, mm-hmm. all the time on YouTube, like but way before we met. And uh, he's on there like at 14 years old or something like that, just shredding. Um. And. Uh, we um so we're like yeah let's make some prep and barium playthrough videos and uh, we set the room all up and got the lighting all cool and uh got several cameras together he brought his gopro which is a, a five it doesn't have the fish eye thing so you know i thought they all did nah no nah, they changed they, the lens yeah apparently not oh so they might have just lens corrected it because it's still really yeah, it's wide though right corrected. yeah it's really wide right and it does have the the face the front uh thing whatever you know what i mean the round convex well that's fish lens. eye yeah that's so fish so eye. fish eye is it's but an it effect, like but it's eye, it's just it's what happens when you go you know, past wide. a certain wide point. So exactly right. if you have like a telephoto lens, you know you're here. You guys yeah. see my hands. So we were able to use all the all our cameras, which was nice. You know, I used the uh, the still camera that actually takes really good videos too, and just put it on a tripod. Yep. a tripod. Uh, that Nikon, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know that one. Yep. Uh, and we took a couple GoPros and then phones. We used our phones uh, and got. I'm some, interested to see how that all looks spliced together with so many different uh, exact, sources. Exactly, and, and we already saw last night. Uh, David was uh, editing it together, and it's looking really killer so oh so you guys have everything set up and you were just filming are you doing one for every song we did yesterday we took a lot of time to get it set up and figure out exactly our our method here and we got one song or no we got two songs done and then uh we were pretty tired we went to get some food never came back but we set it left it set up and then we did it today you know how (laughs) that's the story of you know how it goes well and he was so interested in editing it and actually making sure that it looks right the way he's you know intending Mm -hmm. it to look you know and it looks really awesome so we joke all the time when we did the journey tribute that the band leader would be like, all right, guys, we're going to run the set. It, that was his thing. He'd yeah. always want to run, run the, set, the set, which sounds uh, like so easy. We'll run the set. Dude, right. it's 26 songs. It took like two and a half hours. Yeah. Like running the set was not like a quick little thing. No, no. And he's like, all right, we'll run the set. We'll break for dinner. We'll probably come back, run it two or three more times. Oh my and God. we were, and we, as he'd say this, we were just like, yeah, okay, sounds good. And every time we knew at dinner, we would never go back. No, he's going back. No. So going every, back. And not once did we ever do that. That's funny. It's just like, like we break for dinner and everyone, times yeah. we're really going to yeah, practice. He was like, it's like, it's so easy to just be like, yeah, we'll probably run the set six times. It's like, all right, you're talking about 12 hours. We'll do it 100 times before yeah. making it up yeah we're just saying shit it's easy to just say it let's just say all right let's make it 100 yeah whatever <laughs> that's so funny dude dude it's, it's so stupid oh uh, yeah like have some like expert also what are you getting out of that right right, right. like false hope 
or yeah. whatever. Anyways, you're not um, any better when you run it. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyways, the drum videos. Uh, I think the the thing that got Dave inspired. I don't know this. I'm just me speculating. But uh, when you, I showed him the thrill of the game, or what is it? Sorry. Uh, smell of the game. Smell of the game. It's it hilarious. Seems like it would be thrill of the game, it, but it, it seems like it would be anything but <laughs> smell of the game. <laughs> And Seth goes, yeah, you can tell it was translated from Japanese. Right. And that, exactly that killed problem. me. Yeah, Because exactly. that is exactly what, yeah. That's so like, anyways, you know. he saw that video and he was like, oh shit, man, we should do, we should get back to doing that. And he got inspired. So that was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so you guys made it happen. We made so it happen. are you, were you doing all eight songs? We are going to, we did. Uh, so now we're up to four of them done, um, which is nice. Done and, like edited or filmed? Yeah. Edited. Oh, so four. Oh, no, no, sorry. Not edited. Sorry. Just filmed. And then uh, he's edited one so far. Um, okay. Which is cool. cool, and he's talking about just putting them out like every two weeks or something, just something cool. Yeah, that gives you, you know, nice little six, whatever seven drop. Months of content, a, yeah, yeah, drop a little something here every once in a while. So, you know, who else is doing that? Uh, Avenged Sevenfold doing those breakdown videos. They do them every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's a good like little span to keep people. They've thinking stopped about though, it. haven't they? Or they still yeah, they've them? stopped. Yeah, so they had like a like a course it ran. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, who knows what their thought on was it? How much they intended to do? Maybe they just wanted to. You know, I was surprised by what songs they chose. It seemed very random. It did. That's what I thought. Like I, I was wondered. like, oh, they're doing one from each album, and then they do another one here, and Every, it's like, wait a second. Like, yeah. okay, now now the pattern's all thrown. Yeah, I think they were just doing whatever they felt like. I mean, how hard is it for them to to prepare for it? They just sit there and they talk about what they did. I mean, they got to rent a studio could, and stuff. And they then, probably filmed them all at one one. Point, oh yeah, you know? yeah. And then there's yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Although there were different people in each one. Yeah, so they're not just sitting around I waiting. Know. I don't know either. That looks like their personal studio, but I, I don't know though. Yeah, it could have been one of the band Those members. Those were cool you series. Know. That was a little cool series of uh, you know. I love when, when big bands do that, which is why. Oh, this is a good thing to talk about. We were just talking about Eric Valentine. Uh, well, not you, me, someone else, but uh, Eric Valentine, producer. He did Slash's first album, mm -hmm. and um, I sent you the video. He did a, a mix breakdown of By the Sword. Yeah, dude, I was just talking. Two about hours that. long. He literally no just way. talks you through every single thing he did. Oh, I got You listen to Slash's isolated tracks, solos. Oh my god! You realize that a lot of the guitars you're hearing are not Slash's Marshall amp. What is like, it? It's all kinds of stuff. But a Vox AC30. The solo is three amps blended together. Where? It's like do you um, watch this. Uh, Eric Valentine. I think it's called Making Records with Eric Valentine. You can just find him on YouTube. He's got three tons of them. Yeah. No way. But this is uh, this was just the one I was watching. So I've been just... watching it at the gym. Because mm -hmm. it makes the time go by faster. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was two hours long. So it took like a week for me to get through it. Dude, I know? cannot wait to it's hear like watching it. in little chunks or whatever. Watching it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's awesome. He, he tells you how he mics the drums, oh, who cool. played the drums, the bass, how he mic'd the bass. And like everything he's doing is like not what you would expect to be done. Like, like for example, the drums, five microphones. That's it. And one of them was like mixed really, really low. So, really? Yeah. So everything's the kind of untraditional, you know, what you'd think. Yeah. Well, because Slash wanted to go to tape. So he had 16 tracks and the band's recording right. live, right. which means they're not coming back and forth to the studio for six months. Like right. they're there for one day. Right. And that's a special so. album, which would, if you don't know that album, it's called R and F and R and it's uh, Slash's album. I think that he's just self-titled so in it. I know it says no. that on the cover, but the title of the album is just Slash, like officially. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I always thought it was R and F and R because it, it says, says that on the bottom. The, yeah, he wrote that on the cover. Okay. But well, um, the the idea confirm. behind it being is that he uh, wrote all those songs and then found singers of all that he's worked with through the years, which are some pretty killer lineup of yeah. singers. And uh, one of the ones was Andrew Stockdale of Wolf Mother. Right. Uh, great and singer. Uh, that's the one he's breaking down. That's what he's, Dallas is talking about. I remember so, going to. Uh, I remember. Dropping my sister off at an orthodontist appointment, going to Best Buy and buying this album and then going back and picking her up and yeah. then listening to it for like, you know, a long time. For a long time. I know. It's a good one. I have it on vinyl too, so. What? I don't have it on CD actually though. I've see that? I must have downloaded it. Well, let me pull you guys up here so you can see what's going on. Yeah, what do you saw? Sahara. I don't even know that song. Me and that neither. was the first single off the record? Yeah, that's not right. Or maybe it was cut later. I never Oh, I Japan know. only. There you go. Okay. Single year. Well, now I want to hear it. Jeez, like, <laughs> like, all right, can we hear it? Um, not without getting banned. Oh, not, not for banned, not on the copyright. podcast. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, I'll pull it up. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, we'll go back to our thing here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe I didn't know that song. That's like one of my favorite. It's definitely records. gonna be on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna be listening to that after this. Yeah. Hell yeah. Featuring Who's, Koshi Anaba. I was gonna say, who is that? That's a, uh, I assume a Japanese guy. Is it Miss oh, Fuck Koshi Anaba? That's a weird. I call. bet Drew knows. Drew knows all these Japanese guys. I bet he knows exactly. Oh, he's like, no way, it's got coat. And I guarantee from, you, Drew. From BZ. He's a rock duo. BZ. BZ. B with the apostrophe Z. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, and the B-side was the cover of Paradise, Paradise City, City with Fergie and Cyber Soul. I remember that. I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely remember that. There's a live video of it on YouTube, too. It's only available as a bonus track on the Japanese version of the album. Hmm. It's been re-recorded with lyrics in English. That's a weird choice for him to make. Yeah. I wonder what... I wonder what, what drove him to that choice, yeah. yeah. Hmm. 
Releasing a song that's not even in English. That's interesting. Well, he is a worldwide artist, you know, obviously. Sure, but he's never released anything not in English before. Right. So. Right. Um, okay. That's pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, By the Sword, um, that's the song that Andrew's talked about. I gotta Mother said, Like you out. said. Uh, yeah, how he talks about miking drums, like, uh, he basically does the, the John Bottom thing where it's just two overheads, a mm -hmm. snare, which he uses the snare mic. It's not even in the mix so much. It just blends in. Most of the snare sounds coming from the overheads. Mm. And then the kick mic, he said he used, like, just a condenser mic four feet away from the kick drum. Four feet away. Yeah, and it basically mics. It's almost like a mini room. For you like guys don't the know kick. The, the kick drum is uh, mic is generally right inside. The it's drum. usually it's like uh, inside the you hole. know less than an inch away from the right yeah. or right yeah. on the front of it. Right, and yeah, he's four got feet. four feet so away. That's usually where you would put like a room mic almost. So you get or like an you know? airy an airy kick drum out of that because it's, well, it's, it's not even space. well. He mics the whole kit, so you're getting a lot of toms and cymbals and all this other stuff with it. And then mm -hmm. he does a lot of mixing in post to kind of tweak it from there, but. um He's, he really thinks about things in a cool way. And yeah, he's, outside he's the box. He's a very famous uh, producer, engineer. So uh, he's very famous for being very meticulous. Awesome. And, and really making well, sure that everything's perfect. Well, that record sounds so. amazing. It's one of my favorite yeah, records Yeah, and he did, so, so. He, he did all this with all the different singers and all the different styles and all that stuff. And he just, you know, every, one, every song is nailed. Yeah, you know? and some of them have different drummers, like Dave Grohl on the one track. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like all these different people involved. Yep. The drummer for that for By the Sword was Josh Fries, ah, who okay. I know the name of. And I think actually was in Guns N' Roses for a minute. Oh, okay. For the Chinese democracy stuff. Uh, right back when, yeah, before... Um, Let uh, me confirm all this. I've only ever heard the name. Yeah. What is it so? Free here. Uh, F-R-E-E-S-E. -E yeah, he played Guns N' Roses 97 to 2000. Can you pull this one up? A Perfect Circle, Nine Inch Nails. There, there you go. go. Weezer, Sublime with Rome. Okay, well, I don't know what that is. Sublime with Rome? He toured with Paramore. He's, he seems to be just kind of like, you know, a go-to guy on call. Well, seems like it, right? Probably a killer drummer. I mean, here's everyone he's associated with right here. Look at this. Damn. Yep. He doesn't even have uh, uh, Wolf Mother on there. Well, I don't think he was associated with Well, Wolf I mean, Mother if you so consider, I guess, you know, that song we had written, he probably played the track without him even being there, right? I don't know, because uh, Andrew, Andrew plays guitar on it. He's got a 12-string Right, in there, so maybe they jammed it. Which I didn't even studio. realize was in there until I watched that breakdown. But See, I need to watch that. I feel like I'm behind. You know more than I do about this. Two hours long, that. dude. It's Two like hours hour, of content. Minutes, and he's like breaking you down like, yeah, so here's the bass drum track. Fuck. Here's what I'm doing. Here's where I copied it and added tape distortion. Like, it's like every like micro Nuance, detail. yeah. Damn. Yeah. And Damn. it's cool. It's cool to think about um, or to see how he thinks about stuff. That's the sure. coolest part. Sure. So you kind of get an idea. Oh, he's yeah. born on Christmas. Josh Freese <laughs> was. A special people, man. Born on weird days like that. and Because it, it just, it changes you, I think, your personality. If you're born like on a day that is has a thing that always happens, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or, or something like that. Yeah, like a holiday. And plus, I mean, what about presents? He got gypped, bro. Yeah, he got gypped, gypped on presents. My birthday is December 9th, which is right on the cusp. I was able to enjoy birthday presents and Christmas presents because yeah. it's just it's far enough close. away. Yeah, it's too close. If I was like, like, oh, here's 18th, both your gifts. I would have been, yeah. Here's both gifts in one. Screwed. Yep. It's um, really nice, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess we talked about Weekend Review, mm -hmm. the Amos' show, February 21st. We have a lot of things exactly. going. Talk about making a show an event, dude. We have the debut of the Anything Goes tribute. We are releasing the single fake. We are releasing a new merch uh, design. Yep. Um, it's like what we always talk about. You have to make it an event. Stuff, the whole thing needs to be something worth you know celebrating and worth going to and having a good time. Yep. And your, all, all your events should be that way. You should have every... Every show you play be something special about it to draw people out. You know, that yep. is, you know... That's going to get people to come out more more than just we're playing tonight. <laughs> yeah. And that gets harder. Like it we have hard, for um, sure. For sure. I know what you mean. We've booked 20 shows in this this week. Yeah. But like, they're different areas through too. October. You guys move <laughs> around in good different areas too, so it's like, you know, you play in Ballantyne, yeah. you play in Yeah, well, in yeah, Charlotte. yeah. I mean, it's all Charlotte area, but Charlotte, yeah, dude. Some South Carolina stuff. We had so many shows coming at us this week. I straight up lost track and forgot about. It's like th things started slipping through the cracks. Like uh, it was Oh, yeah. uh, it's that's when it gets sketchy. Yeah, Mark it was calendar. like, oh, keep your calendar. Yeah, like someone was like, looking forward to seeing you in the spring. And I was like, uh, remind me what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, me too. Remind me what it is. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we ended up figuring it out just by going back and looking at the calendar because I had the date held, but not confirmed. So I don't think she ever confirmed it with us. But yeah, man, it's, anyway, it's so, been nuts over here. So you guys are doing that show, though, and it's going to be uh, a single release, correct? Am single I release and the debut of the tribute. The debut of the tribute. So it's those are the big, big two things. Big we night. also have new merch, like a new design. 
How is uh, practice with the tribute going? Is everybody feeling it it's now? Fine. Is it getting, yeah, it's good. Is it getting in its groove? Because yeah. I, I mean, I, know I, mean, how I, that stuff I comes thought together. it's been fine for a while. But. Yeah, yeah, but I know how that stuff comes together. I just, you know, it eventually comes into like a really nice feeling groove. So that's yeah, cool. Yep. Unveiling the talk box today for the first time at rehearsal. Oh, nice. You and I gotta get my wireless why unit you, working why, out. Why, why, why wait so long? You've had that thing. Yeah, it's a pain to set up, so okay, I don't bring so you it every just time. Don't bring it for every time, but now we're getting closer. So get used to it. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And uh, I don't have to sing at all in the tribute, which is nice. Not at all? No backups? Slash I never sing. Cool. So I don't, don't have to do it. Yep. Rest your vocals. Yep. Nice. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. I wrote uh, toying with the idea of creating the super rig. So I was super thinking rig. of getting one of these. Just an MXR AB box. If you're on the video, you can see. Well, if it loads. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, I want I'm, I was thinking about running, like, this thing's super affordable, 60 bucks. I know, yeah. But I was thinking about bringing the, I mean, maybe not at this gig, but just for tribute gigs in the future, or maybe original gigs, like bigger ones, bringing the AFD and the Kemper and like A being between them. Right, right. Why not? Why not? Why not have like your Kemper do stuff that the AFD can't do, you know? And like, yeah, there's some overlap though, because the Kemper can do everything the AFD can do and also a lot more. Of course. So it's kind of like, well, you just use the AFD though, because you already have it. That's what Mm -hmm. I'm saying. And then you use the Kemper for something else. Yeah, yeah. Like the cleans and stuff. Yeah, whatever. The AFD doesn't have a clean channel. Oh, well, there you go. So it's a one channel amp. Well, that's perfect. one thing. That'd be a nice little setup then. You just A, B, the, and you can get them both uh, simultaneously as, as well, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Which would be nuts. Clean in your rhythms. Yeah. Yeah. Double track, like, it wouldn't be stereo. It would be stereo plus mono, right? It, I guess it would have to be. It's just going to be together in, in one uh, feed, but it's, they're both going to so come these, out mono. So these outputs go to the input of the amp, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so then I could still output stereo for the Kemper. Right. For cleans oh, and delays definitely. and stuff like that. Definitely, yeah. Your outputs after that is, you know, I wonder, up to you. check this out. I wonder if I could then, I don't know how this would work. If I could just somehow use just the effects from the Kemper, like set up like a blank tone with no no cabinet, oh, no amp, not nothing a bad on idea. it, and just set up effects and punch them in over on top of it, that's not ideal because you'll still hear the DI sound. Yeah, yeah. But for a clean tone, that might actually enhance it, might it a little work bit. As long as you- I watched someone the other day talk about how he does his clean tones, and it was a phenomenal sounding clean. I think it was Tim Miller, the jazz guitar player. Uh-huh. He runs it through a clean amp like normal, and he also mics his electric guitar, right? Like you would an acoustics. You can hear the pick on the strings, oh, okay. and it creates like the most crystal, beautiful sounding clean tones I've ever heard. Nice. You get that, that's you get that little bit of a plus. I feel like sound. that's kind of what this would do. Only problem being, the AFD is a one channel amp, so I'd only ever be adding those effects on top of a like raging distortion sound or a rolled back kind of a crunchy sound. But, right, right, right. Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, there's definitely, I've experimented with that too. I have an uh, amp switcher and I definitely had a clean channel. Like I have my Fender uh, Twin Reverb and I use that uh, bes- right beside my Mesa and it's cool. Mm-hmm. Like you can really play That's around. That's what Richie Cotson does, yeah. Yeah. He has so a Fender amp for cleans and then he swips, swaps over to a Red Marshall. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, of course. And so that's all you really need. Most people that's like not so to, hard to set up either. No, that, well, the Fender I have is way too heavy, but yeah. <laughs> I could get a better fender. I could get something a lot more. That's compact. the problem too. Like we have our our loadout and load in set to where everything has a place in the car. Right, and, and now there's got, no extra space. You're throw so another, like, yeah. like, there's no extra space. We don't have any. any I could where not bring that up to most gigs. Yeah, you have to I'd have to like bring my car extra or something. You or know? have glad to bring it in the truck. Yeah, but he's already got his stuff at cap. Like we we we're capped. We, oh, we shit. don't have a bunch of extra room. Um, oh fuck. And that's something you know I'd want to move very carefully and. Maybe that's, the trailers that one thing in your really future. Worried. Trailers definitely in your future. We've been talking about that for okay, months. There you go. There you go. Maybe a van, even like just get a dedicated van. Yeah. The problem with that stuff, it sounds good and romantic, mm-hmm. right? Let's get a van. But then you have oil changes, tires, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. maintenance, <laughs> insurance. It adds a lot. You know more. all oh, this stuff that you didn't think about when you're when you found the van for twenty five hundred. Trailer is a good compromise to that. Yeah, that's a good way to do finding it. the right one. Um, yeah, not a small one. You don't wouldn't need much. You'd be surprised. You know. Well, we clothes, need obviously. we need uh, not a ton, but we definitely have some stuff. You want to get it all in one. Definitely, you don't want to have another vehicle. Right. right? Exactly. Absolutely. And we have you know full PA. Um, we want to make room for possibly some like minor lights down the road. Right. Although that's not essential. Right. But you want to have um, some room to expand because you know you will. You know, full drum kit, all that course, stuff, and then all the bags and mic stands and all that stuff. So yeah, amps. It's a lot of little Say amps already. Yeah, but I mean, you roll on a. Rasan has now. a pedal board, and I have my Kemper box, which is not big. Right. So right. If we add the AFD to it, I'd add some stuff. But I don't, yeah. that that definitely wouldn't be for every show. Like I would never do that for a like variety show. Oh, uh, right now. 
No, but the tribute. I would do it for bigger original the shows. Is what I was thinking. And uh, about. tribute. Yeah. 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 So that's and less. the tribute. It, honestly, half of it is for the look. Yeah, you know? of course, of course. Yeah. So you have to have a half stack on stage of your Guns and Roses. Come on, at least yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> at least one. Yeah. But towards the end of their career, they had fucking a <coughs> hundred of them back there. Well, they like. still have them. They still have. Well, now I think they run a lot of stuff like. Uh, don't they run it um, in a... Well, they still have the stack of them there, don't they? Right. Well, they it's do. like three. I, I forgot, don't I forgot everyone's I forgot. still looking at this. Oh, There's so many. Up. Guns and Roses, not in this <laughs> lifetime. Dude, <laughs> you guys are fully enjoying the, my typing abilities. <laughs> yeah, see. Well, I don't see Here's anything there. Image. They have like, he has like three of them, I think, behind him Yeah, because he goes for the feedback and the guy switches it over for him. Pedal, so yeah, that's the, pretty cool. That is a cool trick. We talked about that a couple episodes back. Nah, more than a couple episodes back. Somewhere between two and 50 episodes there back. There they are. There's two of them. Yeah, see, and that's nice right that they built them under the drum riser. Smart way to do it. Or the keyboard riser, if you look at it, like they're standing right there. So right under the keyboard. Trying to find a better picture, but so far coming up empty. There you go. You can see the back of one and of them right the here. the heads, yeah. You can see the head. Looks like he's only got the two, though. Oh, there you go. Three. Three. There's Bingo. the picture. Bingo. Nailed it. Um, but from what I remember, those aren't live in the, in the way you would think they are. Right. What, what you're hearing is in an ISO box, right. like backstage right. somewhere. And he uses that to get feedback, and they switch him over to that. That's the only way they said they could figure out how to get him to be able to do feedback when he wants. That's why it pays to have genius guitar decks, <laughs> yeah, exactly. dude. exactly. And they're also working. It just takes a physical person to switch that over. Yep. I'm sure Slash could do it himself, but why would he want to do that? He doesn't. He doesn't do any of his pedal switching, and he doesn't have a lot does. of it. He only does so, a wah is all he does. Yeah, that's it. All right. Dang. Onward. We could talk about Slash all fucking day if we wanted to. That's and cool, though. AB Box. On the list. Get it. Yeah. Mine, I paid a lot more for mine. Mine was a, a True Path. Uh, um, I forget the name of it, but it's a ABY Box. I guess yeah, it, so this is called an AB box, but it's technically an ABY it as well. The same thing, yeah. yeah. But um, it was $250. Really? Was wow. it radio or something? Uh, no, it wasn't radio. That's the other big name in that, though. Um, it was... Damn it, man. I can never remember. Uh, True Two Path. and a half stars. True Come Path on. on it, but I don't, I don't remember what the brand was. I think it's like the True Path switcher or something. But uh, I heard a lot of things about like fizziness and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, man, I paid a lot of money for cable, like nice cable, so I don't have like noises mm -hmm. and stuff. I hate to add a new pedal that just ruins all that. It's just one more thing. Yeah, my rig's so simple. Yeah. You know, Kemper. Well, the Kemper helps a lot. Yeah. And then they you don't have, you don't have so. pedals attached to each other through. Yeah. And I wouldn't use pedals with the amp either. Yeah, exactly. Because the amp does what I need. And if I, if it doesn't, I can swap over to the Kemper and do what I need. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to see if I can find what that thing was called real quick. I would like to have a pedal board in some sort of clever way that I could keep the Kemper remote, the talk box and the AB switcher on, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because the know. talk box is kind of an interesting setup, actually. It is, it is the it. bane of every pedal board's existence. Yeah. Every pedal board I've ever had cannot fit it the way it needs to be fit. Yeah, because first of all, it's a big, bulky thing. Super heavy, too. Second of all, it's what, kind of... But like what you don't you realize, it. it's super tall, dude. It's like, it's like that tall, yeah. where most pedals, you know, might be that tall. Because right, it's got that big hose thing sticking off of it, where you put, plug the hose in. Yeah, can you explain how it's hooked up, too? Because it's not hooked up like you think it. It's not just before... Yeah, I can um, show you. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. So Full Tone is the name of the brand. Uh, Full Tone Custom okay, yeah. Shop, uh, True Path. That's it right there. 220 now, so it's gone down a little bit. Oh, nice. It's been fucking So this is the Heel Talk Box, or Heil, however you say it right here. So this, um, you see right here. Oh, here's a great, this thing. Yes. And also, it's tall in general, but this thing makes it impossible to fit in a pedal board that, like, closes. Right, because it's so tall, yeah. And, and it makes it impossible. Sticking also, the out. thing's pretty big, like... I wonder if there's a video of someone like here's someone holding it like it's pretty big. Yeah. All right. So how do you run it? How do you plug it? Oh, you run it like diagram this. right here. So, so most it. people think it would be sitting right here, right where you have like all your effects pedals on your in your effects. Let's see if I can make this bigger. But or your it. effects pedals. Yeah. yeah. So you would run guitar, talk box, amp. Mm -hmm. um, not so. It goes from the amp head, and then sits between the amp and the speaker. So it exactly. comes out of the power out. So it actually receives power because right. this thing is a little speaker. Yeah. And, uh, and then That's, it runs to the cab from there. Right, the speaker and then, is what makes that noise. Is it's distorting a speaker inside the box, which is why that thing is so big, too. Yeah, actually, and what you're hearing, and heavy, yeah. and what you're hearing is coming only from the PA system. If there was not a mic there, you right. would not hear it in, exactly. in, like, a full mix. If we were sitting in a room together, you would. But it's, right. like, it's just the sound of this little tiny amp coming out of this tube. Yep. And so you put the tube in your mouth, and you're, you sit right on the mic like you're singing, and yeah. it amplifies it. So Yeah, so if you want to have that thing on your, on your pedal board because you need to be able to switch it in and out, you have to run cables back 
back all yeah, the way to ca- your our cables are going pedal. back and forth. All, yeah, it's all kind the, of a yeah. pain in the ass, and you yeah. have to. You obviously want to keep good pedals because you don't want to lose signal, you know, quality. <clears throat> I mean, no oh, cables. How do they do it cables. for guns? You think? I don't know. So the pro way to do it is not this way, by the way. Snakes, uh, probably, this like, is the pro way to do it. Probably. Oh, so you A, B, and you have two amps. One of them is just your normal amp. One of them is, stays with the talk box on, okay. and it doesn't go to a speaker from there. Okay. So um, the reason being, they say it can be dangerous to swap. You're basically swapping the load at the tap of a button oh, from right. your speaker. Or from, from your, your head, yeah. yeah. Ah, that makes sense. So uh, this is the pro up, way to, I see. to do it. So you would have two AFDs, for example. One would be what the crowd hears all the time, the Kemper. So this is, you're going to be running an AB, yeah. So And yeah. then this, the, the AFD would basically only be used for the talk box, which is fine with me and, and also because of the show right. part of it. Right. You know, if I was only going to use it for the talk box and I didn't need it to look cool, I probably wouldn't do it. But yeah. um, I'm going to test it today just running the, you know, running with yeah. the... Oh, look, here's a little how Kemper. to build a talk box uh, thing. That's pretty interesting. I think it's just a at. diagram of the Heil. Essentially, yeah, that's what it's what they're showing. This little speaker in there. Yeah, that's cool though. Anyways, cool. I'm, I'm excited for the 21st, man. Your mouth. 21st. It's a Friday or a Saturday. Uh, Friday. Friday. Cool. And that's Saturday and Sunday's gig night. Ah, it's shit. gonna be a busy weekend. Shit. Well, that'll be cool as fuck. Yep. Big night. Big night. Not right. gig night. Big gig night. <laughs> <laughs> um. You want oh, yeah. I was listening stuff. to the Cat House podcast, which we've been talking about. Yeah. You want to, and, um, I don't think we've even talked about that a lot, have we? Not like You a, told well, me did, about it. Did, I don't yeah. think we ever talked about it on air. Okay, okay. Now that you've caught uh, up on yeah, some Yeah, you, you talk about it a little bit. What is it? You, you okay, kind of so, gave me the rundown. Yeah, so in, in L.A., in the scene in, in the 80s and, uh, you know, I guess into the 90s, uh, they, you know, was the big rock scene, and uh, they had a rock club uh, called the Cat House, and the idea was this dance club with, that played rock music, so it wasn't you know disco or whatever was going on in the other, besides rock music at that time. Um, and so all the bands would show up at that place, and there was all kinds of crazy stories that developed. Obviously, you have all these you know giant egos and characters getting together and mingling. We talked about this before, but so that's what the podcast is basically recounting these stories, and then he gets some pretty big names on it to talk to the stories, you know, with them. Which is yeah, cool. So now um, you're twenty something episodes in. Or uh, well, he's only got like twenty. I'm. I think okay. I'm at like twelve or thirteen. Oh, okay. But I've just been blasting through them yesterday and today. Yeah, like I awesome. listened to all twelve. They're yesterday super today. exciting, and, and some of them um, go quick. Yeah. Some of them are like eighteen minutes. Yeah. Some of them are a full hour. Um. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh Ricky Rackman's the guy that hosts it. Yeah, he's he the was owner the Headbangers the Ball. Uh, right. Host much on later. TV. So at, not much later, but uh, the Cat House opened in '86, so not as early right. in the '80s. as No, he didn't get right in, but I don't remember Cat House. How he got that? You know, Axel Rose. Axel, yeah. Axel Rose was hanging out all the time. And he was just like, I'll, I'll see what I can do or something. He tells Whatever a story he's... of Axel coming over with a videotape yes. and putting it in. And they watched, and it's the Paradise City music video. And he mm-hmm. said, Axel's watching him really closely, um, kind of gauging his reaction is what he could feel like. Like if you showed me your album and you're watching me to see right. what I think, right? Right. And um, he couldn't figure out why. And at the very end, he realized Axel's wearing a cat house shirt in the right. Paradise video. And he's he's like splayed, like open, yes. like very obvious, like yes. advertisement for the cat house. Right. And this video that he knows is going to be, because he was video. one of the first people to see yeah. it. And Paradise so, City yeah. was going to be their big song. We knew that. Yeah. Uh, one thing he, I think he actually got wrong. He said... Uh, the video shows them playing to a bunch of sold out crowds and he left out the fact that they were opening for Aerosmith and those Aerosmith's crowd. Right. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They were playing, they were playing to a people. big crowd, but it wasn't for them. That right. was, they were still kind of on the way up sure, at that point. Sure. Yeah. But it was a good video and nonetheless, it looked good. It's it one of my impressive. favorite videos. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Goliath has that same cat house shirt. He's going to be uh, yeah, You can get him. I got yeah. it. Yeah. That's funny. You can get him still. Um, I don't remember where he got it from. You know, but Ricky Rackman is in fucking Mooresville. Yeah. Charlotte area. That's crazy. Yeah. Mooresville. I mean, that's pretty much greater Charlotte area, right? It's a 30 minute. 45 minutes north of Charlotte. It's yeah. definitely less. It's race city. It's definitely less like Charlotte. Okay. It's more like uh, people building race cars. More like NASCAR. its own thing. NASCAR. It is. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, I mean, if you live 40 minutes outside of Atlanta and but you met how, someone from far away, you would there, say Atlanta. Because he right? worked for NASCAR afterwards. Right. You know what I mean? So that's right. why he's there. He's there for you know, race city. That makes sense. Yep. Uh, but he had Billy Duffy on the podcast, which is the episode I'm listening to now. Yeah, and he had a quote one. that I really liked. What did he say? He said, rock and roll is from the waist down and metal is from the waist up. And like that made that. a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Like rock and roll is kind of sleazy and dirty and get your hips moving. Yeah. And metal's kind of more of the head banging, uh-huh. you know, throwing and, your arms. Yeah. Kinda. And a little more technical, like it, it more like you think about a brainy too, like head, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Think, versus like groove. Exactly. Versus, versus you know, right. Going for I thought the, that was a really clever good. way to put it. That is a good clever way to put it. Yeah. I think I remember him saying that too. I can't, it's been a while since I watched them now. I still haven't seen them all even, but I did see that one. Yeah. Uh, to it. I, I, I say see, but I don't know how no video. It's, it's an audio podcast that's on YouTube. I said it is on YouTube. 
Yeah, yeah, oh, that's okay. why I watch it. Or that's why I listen I got to you. it. I only ever We're... listen on the Apple Podcast. Why is this camera not focusing? Come on, let's do this, dude. Yeah, see, we already got a problem. All right, there we, we go. Got problems. I don't even know why it would unfocus, though, you know? Probably our face moving in and out towards the microphones. My We're big not head. Moving that maybe. far, though. My big head might be pulling gravity towards it. <laughs> 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 that's just gravity you're seeing. <laughs> it's just the change in gravity. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's a good podcast. You guys check it out. Cat House Hollywood definitely, podcast. Definitely. If you like like Guns and Roses and all the other bands that were running around back then, I mean, they kind of talk about them all. You know. Yeah. It was mainly Guns and Roses. It seemed like were his. Yeah. his well, boys. the general premise is Billy Duffy um, was there, obviously from the cult. So. Well, Faster Pussycat, the Tammy Faster Down Pussycat owned the, the club with him. Right. The co-owner. Yeah, of that's the crazy. Club. Yep. Um, the general premise is they're telling tales from those days. Which is important because there's no photo documentation because they wouldn't let cameras in the cat house, right, exactly. which encouraged people to be even crazier. That exactly. was the whole point of the rule. Exactly. They came dressed um, up to the nines and they went nuts and, and nobody could judge them or anything. So it was a judgment free zone kind of thing. Yeah. Which is cool. I like the idea of a rock club, you know, a dance club that's just rock, you know? Yeah. And it's cool because they, they, they like, constantly say this and I totally agree. It would never work today. No, it just yeah, would never exactly, work. Exactly. It's a time and place thing. So they were right in the perfect place in the heart of it all. And It'd be Me Too time. City. Yeah. No way. No way. <laughs> Not now. They had girls in cages. There's at some point they talked about that. Mm-hmm. Something about girls in cages. That's kind of a normal like strip club thing, though. It, it is. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's an artistic aesthetic. It's not like a you know. Yeah. It's just it's I don't know. Well, they know who's at strip clubs, right? And that's right. Totally. Horny dudes. That right. Well, you know, and the <laughs> rock clubs too. It turns out. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's <laughs> one of the same kind of. Um, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. This is a, a tiny little one thing, but I figured I'd announce. Uh, the LA maybe has started a podcast that comes out Wednesday. Hell so, yeah. Wait, days when, after this, this one Wednesday? Drops. Yep. No shit. And uh, it's called The Reckless Podcast. And it's just us, you know, talking about behind the scenes stuff, discussing, you know, cool. just, just diving deep on LA maybe stuff and getting to know people better and that kind of stuff. So oh, that's cool. Um, what we did not plan this at all, but what the first episode ended up being was Rasan and I diving deep into the original demos for the EP dating back to like 2016. Okay. And listening to all the original demos and like hearing how the songs changed and became what they are. Like we didn't realize... I didn't realize this either. Uh, what became She's Reckless was, was originally called Get Out. And the right, chorus was that. different, which I don't remember. I didn't remember it had totally a totally different, different chorus. No yeah. way. I'll have to show it to you after this. But So you had like a realization on the podcast? Yeah, where I was like, oh my God, I have no recollection of this riff <laughs> at all. Like, That's and, cool. And it was very different and not as so, good. All right, so you said you and Rasan were there. Was the rest of the band on it? <laughs> no, it's uh, what we advertise is it's going to be some or all. Right, so whoever you can get so, at the time. At the very least, it'll be two of us, and at the most, it'll be all five. We're probably not going to have all five or slash six. You know, there's we right. have kind of a six guy working with us now, but um, keyboard, yeah, Josh Thompson, amazing, oh, yeah. amazing keyboard player. But uh, he'll be with us at the twenty first, by the way, for perfect. the original perfect. and the Dizzy Reed goes. style. Yep, nice. So we're working him in. But anyway, Great. yeah, you can get that wherever you uh, get podcasts or whatever. I just figured I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. That's awesome. No, I'm um, I'm very really glad. You surprised me with this. You were like, I'll tell you on the show for it. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. On. Yeah, what else did you have to say about it? Because I didn't realize I hadn't told you about it yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. That's cool. I've, I've thought about kind of the same thing for us later on. I, I'm not ready to do mm-hmm. anything like that anytime soon, but it would be fun to, you know, do a little kickback talk behind the scenes stuff for Prep and Berryman. And we'd probably do it late, like, I don't know, maybe one a month or something. I don't even know. Something just yeah, we're trying casual. To go, we're trying to go weekly. That's I mean, that's in, that's ambitious. Like you, we know how ambitious, too, but you know how ambitious that is because obviously we do this weekly. Yeah, come on, camera, <laughs> come on, camera. We can do it uh, remotely too, hopefully. So. Oh right, because you're gonna use like the Zoom little thing and stuff. See if I can. Hey, bringing it in. There it is. My this head. camera struggles. This one does, huh? Um, it wasn't the most expensive, so. We are. We still have a few more minutes to kill before. Oh we... yeah, dude, I want to show you something. Yeah, yeah, but we have. Uh, we're out of our topic, so we're gonna. Improvise while Matt digs in his backpack. Oh, I want to make sure you had that. Wait, you guys got to sign it for me. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'll get another one signed, but you can have that I one love we so we had someone order a signed CD. That's my CD, by the way. Yeah, let's uh, let's show them. We had a signed CD show or someone order a signed CD from the LA, maybe. And uh, we joked, like, what if we signed the plastic? <laughs> Don't open it. And he gets it and he's like, ah, shit. <laughs> shit, I wanted to listen to it. <laughs> and then uh, we were going to sign the plastic and then, well, we, we were going to f- try to figure out how to unwrap it, right? fuck you, Ugh, and then wrap the plastic and then sign the plastic. <laughs> so he realizes he's got to open it up and then it says fuck you, That's which we thought would be you. funny. But yeah, obviously we would never do that. But um, No, but that would be extreme. Well, I would do that to someone who could take a joke. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I got to see the inside. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, so, let me show the people here. That glare, that glare is something else. Yeah, huh? it is. What is it coming from? That's the oh, white, the white bar, <laughs> the on, white bar the, on the, the mesh bar. Yeah. 
All right, which which part do I take out and throw directly into the trash? Is uh, it the CD side. part? Start with whatever side okay. you want, but both of them All have right. to go in the okay. trash. Uh, both of them have to go in the trash. <laughs> and then <laughs> I listen to it on Spotify, right? Yeah, you listen to it on Spotify, that's right. <laughs> No, but um, you know, oh, this is amazing. We no, did, we did all little, this. Yeah, we did. We cover our table with a bunch of stuff that we. Oh, like that's genius. Lyrics. That's like super real. Then it is. We took yeah, love yeah, it. Our like you could Photoshop that. Yeah, but yeah. that looks awesome. No, we did, we pulled it together at the last minute. We were like a bunch of our cool like things and. I it. ain't fine. Nice. That's your part, right? Flip it over. It is my part. Got a little. I want to enjoy all of it. Is. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! And then all the thank yous. Oh, all right. Lots of thank yous, and I got you down there. I think. Nice. I believe. And then on the back of it, uh, oh no, the back of it's just a picture, but on the back of the actual album, it's on there. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. And that's pictures from us at Amos's. We we'll have to actually read it. Yeah, yeah. Give it a read. You'll Some dig point. It. Yeah, we didn't do a booklet or anything. We just did a, a, like a super easy sleeve. Look at how wanna... bright the roses turned out. Just weirdly, like they're just yeah. so bright. It's awesome. It's cool. I like it. Anyways, that's Dude. our CD. I'm, it's my first fucking. I'll ever put it CD. to my uh, collection of CDs. Mm. Which I have a collection of CDs that are all like Your my band, friends of bands, yes, stuff yes. like that. Yep. And uh, Train's first album. Because <laughs> <laughs> that CD is so hard to find, grail. dude. That CD is impossible to find. Supposedly, they only put out like 25,000 copies of what it. What was it called again? Is it just, just Train? Subtitle, yeah. yeah. But, dude, it's got the, um, I'll show you guys the cover of it real quick. It's got the yellow, the yellow cover with the king. Oh, this yes, one. yes. This album. And it's hard is to find impossible now. Impossible to find on on okay, CD. Well, this on is anything? the problem with having right off the bat having a name like Train, Train. <laughs> which is why up. if you Google the LA Train, Navy Train. or Prep and Barry, you find an actual band. Yeah, exactly, and that's uh, that's <laughs> what we both thought Train of. Band album. <laughs> Here you go. There you this go. This one. It's super hard to find, dude. Me and Ashton, we made it our quest. Anytime we were anywhere that had CDs, we'd go look straight to the T's, well. see if we could find. Might it. as well. We finally found it at an obscure uh, old record shop in Columbia called Manifest. There's one I saw one the other day in in Charlotte somewhere. I bet you can find. I it didn't at realize Lunchbox. it was a chain. We just were at Lunchbox yesterday. I bet you could find one at Lunchbox. You like, should go check it out. You should start looking for it and tell yeah. me if you find any. Because want one, you we, want me to just get it for you. Yeah, we okay. found one, and it was cracked. And like, oh. I don't care about that, but it was like, that's how like, it's just a jewel case. Yeah. And, but yeah. like, that's how like, you know, weirdly rare it is. Right. Like right. You, the one you find is like cracked in the back, like under a bunch of stuff. And you're just like, dang dude. Well, like, they get bought up quick. Probably. This is the that's album why. with uh, meat. Right? Virginia. On you it. Probably just see people get it. It's very, I don't know. I don't think a lot of people really care about that album. I, I personally love it. It's one of my favorite albums. Okay. I don't and, really know um, it to be honest. I, I think I know the other, well, one. you know, meet Virginia. Yeah. That song's yeah. On yeah. It. That was the first song in the in the single off. I of think it. it's the other CD that I know all the songs on it though. Like you know, what I mean, the one that drops uh, Jupiter probably. That's, that's their the second one. album. That's the one. Yeah. yeah, that's a great album. That was just the time I found them. I think mm -hmm. the '90s or something. Like I always that. hear drops of Jupiter when I'm in like the mall at Belk. Yeah, you know? you're like, is that drops? <laughs> it's Jupiter? a great song, though, man. I dig that song. <laughs> yeah, we added it to our set list, which has been a lot oh, of fun because it's one of my um dude who sings all time it? favorite you songs. Black. Me, nice, yeah. nice. I'd love to hear that. Yep, that we added. Uh, the newest songs we've added were that and Easy. By Lana Richie, Ooh, both, yeah, both which, of which I sing, which yeah, gives which Goliath I've a little bit of a I've heard you do easy before. Not sing it, but I've heard you play uh, it. Noodle around, yeah. And um, the Duff gig. Yep. Uh, Speaking rock. of the Duff gig, Bruce called me the other day and we talked for like an hour. Oh, cool. How's he Just doing? Just catching up. Yeah, he's back in Seattle. Loving it. Oh, he's back in Seattle. That's right. Yeah, he moved Seattle. in yeah. August. Yeah. That's cool. So catching cool. up. You know, he's Is always he got projects and stuff. Is he out here at all or... Is his plan? Does uh, he doesn't really have anything out here. Right. Like all of his family's in Seattle. Right. So he basically moved back home. Um, oh, not go. basically that's exactly what that's he did exactly what he did so he's happy to be there you yep. know cool all kinds of cool stuff so he's got some some musical projects he's working on that he wanted to talk about so excellent well he could still send good stuff to catch up. Even mix yeah oh yeah i like, still get some yeah. shit done for him that's cool that's cool yeah man what else is going on good. this might be a shorter one than normal huh your, yeah, lip, your lips look very red yeah you see that i don't know why mine look that red it's weird it's very weird i don't know um Anyways, the you got practice later today. Are you doing uh, anything goes practice? Undecided. Undecided. It's a mm -hmm. random practice. Yep. I think we're gonna roll definitely the dice when we get there. Stuff, see, though, what, yeah. see what happens. I've been uh, I've been listening to the album on Spotify, by the way, oh, or not cool, Spotify, man. but Apple Music. Thank you. Uh, hey, let me give you a couple more for the guys too, because I know they're probably dig it. I know Foz probably. Have plenty of them, dude. Yeah, Foz, take Foz actually them. listens to CDs. Does he? He See, can't, he can't comprehend that like <laughs> CDs, CDs aren't are a going, thing anymore. They're, they're like, going to be gone. Like, so Logan used to work at CDA, which is a massive CD duplication yeah. plant, and yeah. they've closed completely they're down. It's like, how much off. more like, evidence do you need? Yeah, the, giant, the biggest one. Like, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. 
But um, now it's good to have CDs. I was gonna say you know. I always ask before I before I even pitch the CD to somebody. I asked, hey, do you still you still got a way to play CDs? <laughs> I, I, like, I do not, but I, I but know, I love keeping I know you, like physical friends copy. and stuff. And then eventually I want to do a vinyl, and I will just use the same artwork and blow it up. Oh, it's yeah, all for sure. high res, so um, we'll do vinyl a year, maybe a year in, we'll do an anniversary kind of vinyl thing because it's yeah, so vinyl's expensive. so expensive. Oh dude. my god. I remember I was in Eddie's office when he was getting the quotes for yes. vinyl on his yes. thing, and I was just like, "What?" It was like a thousand bucks for like twenty-five of them, I yes. think. So at that, that point, right. then you got to go. Maybe more. it was like a hundred or two hundred, but it was like you know. It definitely uh, helps when you get bulk. When you, go, I think it was like ten dollars a unit or something yeah. like that. Jack White is uh, famous for bringing yeah. that back big time. As far as like he's opened his own record shop and mm -hmm. uh, all these things. Just not record shop, like yeah, it's, sells it's, records. It's but cool record, when people like that. Plant, I personally could give two shits about all of it, but <laughs> it's, I like um, it, man. I like I I'm. Less concerned with all the minutia of the music, and I'm more concerned about the music itself. Okay, let me you know what I mean. Let me tell you this way because somebody said this one time, and it really uh, struck a chord with me. Uh, me. They said that vinyl is your music sanctuary. You can't you you're when you're listening to vinyl, it doesn't your vinyl player does one thing; it plays music. Mm -hmm. You know, and also you have to flip the record, so you're you're more yeah you have to like you're more engaged. Yeah, you're more involved. Often. Yeah, 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 you have to like go to it and actually flip it over and do put the needle again, right? Um, but it's and it's also you only do that there like it's just your sanctuary to listen to music So if you just want to chill out listen to music like if sure. you listen to Henry Rollins talk about Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's like, also a big nerd and he's got a big speaker set that he's mm -hmm. spent he said it was like 50 grand or something. <laughs> yeah. Some crazy astronomical price <laughs> But uh, he sits in his little room and that's what he does. He just listens to vinyl yeah. So he's just going to record stores and you know trying different things listening. To that's things. amazing. Yeah, I mean not taking anything away from that but the way I think of it is it's like um Worrying about what you're going to wear to the basketball game instead of like practicing, your yeah, free practicing throw. to play, right, like, right, right. Or, or instead of worried about playing. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like you're worried, and and, and again, there's nothing matter? wrong against that, yeah, but it's yeah. like because some people really love that and that's cool. Like I really love guitar. Some people could give a shit about guitar. Sure, I don't exactly, care. I don't, exactly. I don't take that person. Oh, everything's but, to each his own. You know. Like, but like for me, like if I can get the same thing out of listening to it on Spotify without worrying about all this extra right, shit, right. that goes wrong got, all the time. And you've like, got a killer setup as far as that you're sitting in your studio all the time listening to music and these badass speakers. I mean, it's not like you're not getting a high quality. I mean, you're getting, yeah. it's degraded because it's been streamed, but it's not. Yeah. I also don't have that nostalgic connection to records. Like, right. All the old guys that love records and stuff are all kind of a lot of it is probably coming from the nostalgic like remember when we listen to records and like kinda, i don't have that because i'm kind of but like what i was 26. saying before about the music sanctuary thing i feel that way when i go home and i like put on a record and i just chill out and like sit on the couch and kind of yeah. you know de decompress a little bit from the day whatever you know when i get a second it's nice and it's a little bit more effort but it's really not that bad i don't listen to music that much anymore I was talking to someone about that the other day. I was like, I think people would be surprised how little music I listen to anymore. You listen to it in spurts, though. You listen to like a little part here. You remember things sure. and you'll go and check it out. Like you're doing it a lot of listening, but it's like kind of skimming mm -hmm. almost like for the part yeah. that you remember. And if you I ever have, have to sit down and do like a bunch of work, yeah, I'll, I have my queue of albums over here on my right that I'll be like, all right, I haven't listened to these four. I'm just going to blast through them real quick while right. I'm doing this. Exactly. And and I don't pay too much attention to it until something sticks out. And that's right. when I know I like it. Something you don't if remember. I, if I turn something. my head and go, whoa, that's cool riff. Like right. that's when I know I like it. If I, if it just blows by without me thinking about it, I kind of chalk that up to like for, forgettable for me, like not, not didn't catch my ear, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. And that's, that's all you're doing is when you're listening to music in the background like that, you're kind of listening to, you know, for cool stuff. Yeah. Some people blow your fucking mind the whole time. You're like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, I, gotta, yeah. I gotta find out. I mean, that's the cool There was stuff. a band. Here's a funny little anecdote story thing that we were driving somewhere in grind. So, you know, tons of miles on the road, just, you're just constantly looking for music to listen to or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we found this one band on my iPod. It was an iPod at the time, iPod classic. I had it loaded with stuff that I didn't even really know. Mm -hmm. I don't remember even where I got it from. Right. And we discovered this one band. I remember it was something brothers, either the something brothers or brothers, something or something like that. And it's not any of the ones that come yeah, to your mind. I was going to say, a, I'm probably not even going to guess. It's a deep band that you would not be able to find. Okay. And it was the grooviest, funkiest rock. And every single song, we were all looking at each other like, dude, this this is amazing. Yeah, see? Never been able to I, find it I since. I love that surprise, but Never yeah, that sucks you didn't, it. It. you didn't get it. The down. Brothers. Some, I'll have to Google the like brothers. bands that are called Brothers. or yeah, <laughs> Dude, was, I wish I could find it. The Brother Bands. Band Brothers. I need to find it again. But it was just like every song was like a cool riff with like a groovy drum beat. It was almost like Chili Peppers, but more like rock. Okay. I don't. And the sounds singing cool. was cool, like, like '70s funk style singing. I think. Well, you've you've enticed me. Now I want to know. I'm sure I, you. I'm sure you've wanted to know be my for a quest long to time. find it. <laughs> I find it, dude. You can do yeah. it, especially nowadays. Do have you noticed that when you look things up that you couldn't find before and you can find it now? Where was the internet hiding it, or is it the search engines that lacked, or is it the search engines that couldn't like process it as well? Now, now they're much better at it. What are you looking at now? 
I don't know. Oh, 43 <laughs> Brothers in Bands. That's what that was. I was like, what the hell? What kind Names of, band? of music bands that have the word brothers in it. There, there you go. go. Somebody asked the same question. There you go. Oh, Jonas here we go. Brothers. Doobie Brothers. Isley Brothers. Naked Band. I Naked think Brothers Band? I like that. The Naked uh, Brothers I Band. That. that made me think of the Jompson Brothers, which is um, uh, Stapleton's former band. Nice. Chris the, Stapleton. The Wright Brothers Band. Um, Blues Brothers. None of those. I, I think I will see it. Come on, you gotta know it. It'll it'll ring a bell. Chemical Brothers, Out There Brothers. I mean, you guys should be watching this though. Funk Brothers, yeah, why not? We're scrolling through it right now. The Jonas Brothers. I also could probably do it with keywords like funk, rock, brothers. Right. You know? Right. Might try that. Yeah, you might be able to like narrow it down by genre. Doobie Brothers, Waco Brothers, Mills Brothers. Dude, there's so many brothers. So many brothers. And I'm not... Um, the Jonas Boys. <laughs> they the changed the boys. boys at the end. I'm not 100% sure that I will notice it when I see it, but I think I will. Little River Band. Uh, oh, wait, they're brothers? some right here. I didn't even notice this yeah, guy did it because he yeah. wrote it in a paragraph. Right. right. Terrible format. Band yeah, come on, dude. No commas chapter. or anything. Wait, so these are just band people with brothers in the band. Because some of them do not have brothers. Okay, in, like, that Marshall dude doesn't Tucker understand band. basic. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's not getting yeah. it. Anyways. Um, well, if you find that, send it to me. And I want to listen to it because Chili Poppers, more rock and Chili Poppers. I want to, I mean, Chili Poppers, Chili, chili Peppers. Poppers. <laughs> Dude, can't fucking talk. It was not the Funk Brothers. I cannot talk. Not the Funk Brothers. Pootsie Collins. I would not be surprised if Pootsie Collins was involved in this band that I, that he I had produced found, it. <laughs> I would not be surprised. You're at sure all. it was something Brothers? Like, that's for sure. Dude, I'm not that sure. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Man, you're going to have to dig deep, find that. Do you know Bootsie? I don't, I don't know. know. I know him as like, like a personality, but I don't yeah, know his music very me neither. well. No, I'm not. I know he's like a funk icon. I wish I knew better, but and I've created a character in my head of the ultimate funk, like '70s funk the bass player. He's in there, dude. Oh, look at head. that! No shit. But um, the ultimate funk bass player, we named him Wizard Green. Wizard Green, and he looked like you know Bootsy Collins. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. my head. Hilarious. Wizard Green. Snoop dropped. <laughs> he did, did Snoop Dogg. Oh, he appeared on it. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to like do some searching and maybe I'll find it, but all right, uh, unlikely. Unlikely, it might be lost to the universe. Yeah, obviously, you've wanted it definitely to find wasn't it for a like while. a big famous band or anything. Yeah, obviously, you've wanted to find it for a while. So if you haven't found it yet, I mean, it's, it's yeah. I mean, that would have been 2014, so it wasn't like forever ago. But um, the music itself forever was a long ago. Time ago. It's 2020, bro. Yeah, so six years. <laughs> It's crazy. Time's flying. Dang. Um, yeah. Final thoughts as we wrap wrap yes. up here. Sorry. Right, so we have one more episode before episode 100. How does that make you feel? Um, holy crap, you're right. Mm -hmm. Are we prepared? We got to do we a little logistics. Well, we'll next be. week, you said, was the week we wanted to do some of the... Yes. So next week, maybe plan we, on... Maybe uh, we get a lot more done. We got to plan on being here um, Getting all the for talks. more time. Yeah, the interview's done. Yeah, maybe we can knock that out. Or maybe we can get some of them and then the others the next week. It's definitely not, not, out, of the, not out of the realm of possibility. I hope you're... Oh, we still have to do the final week. session, yeah. which is this well, coming that, Friday. Yeah, but that's just, what, four hours or so. Yeah, yeah, but that's this coming Friday. By the way... Uh, well, we'll talk about it off mic. Uh -huh. I wanted to be surprised. Okay. Uh, I want to say something, but we, yeah, we'll, we'll just talk about it later. Because uh, I see it will work better for after the uh, we do the session. After it's all revealed? After the set, okay. yeah. Cause I was going to talk about details for the session, but I figured Yeah, I we'll almost did it. the same yeah. thing. All right, cool. Okay, okay, well, let's end it. All right. We'll see you guys next week, peace. and um, peace.